Hello class, so this is Mr. Koi. So our objectives for today are to accurately label work in heat scenarios, which is what we worked on in class today, as well as go on and start solving word problems, which is what we are going to do tomorrow. So as always, use audio, because I say a lot more than I write, because talking is much easier for me, it's much easier to listen for you. And Try the problems first, then watch. Alright, let's go to it. Alright, so let's start with the first one. A pendulum slowly loses its motion and comes to a stop. Then we'll go on to the next one, the next one, and the next one. So try these on your own. Figure out, is it heat, work, Excuse me, let me do the different order. Is it work, heat, both, neither? Alright, now that you've tried them on your own, let's look at the pendulum. So the pendulum, the pendulum is an object that is attached at one point and will swing back and forth. So it's swinging in the beginning. So it has some sort of gravitational potential at the top, and then it moves, and it has kinetic energy. And then eventually, it comes down to a stop, so eventually your pendulum is no longer moving, so it pretty much is a zero energy. So what happened, uh, it had to lose energy as friction, possibly with the air, or with maybe the string up here had some friction. So that would cause me to label it under heat, Q. Alright, then let's look at the rock. You have a rock already pulled back in a slingshot. So it's already been stretched. Alright, then later you release the rock and your rock is going and it flies through the air. So in the beginning we have spring potential. It was already pulled so we didn't change anything. It's starts with spring potential energy and then when we let it go that spring potential all changes to kinetic and think is it going to go as fast as it begins or does it kind of slow down as it goes if you think about real life it does slow down because it keeps hitting the air so this is also going to be a heat problem our slingshot and rock lost energy from hitting the air. Alright, next one. We are holding a weight above your head. And later you were still holding a weight above your head. Yeah, so it has gravitational potential energy here. It still has gravitational potential energy. It hasn't moved from where it was, so its energy is exactly equal. That means nothing else is going on. It's neither. I know you're thinking, oh, but there has to be some work being done. It takes so much energy. It's hard. True, that's actually because <coughs> you're moving slightly to the side all of the time. But if you hold it without moving, you actually don't really use up work. Alright, and we're going to go to the ball rolling down a hill. So you have a ball on a hill. Alright, and then it rolls down said hill. So up at the top, it has potential energy. If it's already moving, it has kinetic. But for argument, let's just say it hasn't started yet. Then at the bottom, it has kinetic energy. And there's no friction. That means, remember, back to when we are doing a lot of conservation of energy. We did a lot of balls rolling down hills with no friction. These two are equal. It is also neither. It doesn't lose any energy. Therefore, and since we didn't, we, no one pushed it, it just went on its own, it also, there was no work. So all of these are either heat or neither. Alright, let's go on to a real word problem. Alright, so this first problem, read through it, try it on your own. 
try to label what each piece is, draw a good picture, and come back. Alright, now that you've come back, we have a woolly mammoth. There's a picture, but I'll just draw one. This is my woolly mammoth. It's beautiful. Um, and it's pulling a sled. Oops, didn't leave a lot of room, but it's pulling a sled. This sled is 800 kilograms. Alright, it's pulling a sled across an icy rope. Alright, so we know that later he's still pulling it. I know, it's getting more beautiful as time goes on. Alright, so inside this rope there's a tension of 10,000 newtons. So he's pulling it with 10,000 newtons. And the distance it goes is 20 meters. So for work, if you remember, work is equal to the force parallel times the change in distance. So the force he's pulling it with is 10,000 newtons. And it's going over 20 meters, so you multiply them. So as long as my mental math is correct, that's 2,000, 200,000, excuse me, joules of work. Alright, and then how much does the amount of work depend on whether or not there is friction of the ice? This is a thought question. Does the amount of work change, or does the amount of friction change the amount of work done? Alright, so the amount of work does not depend on whether or not there's friction. This is how hard they pulled it. This is how far they pulled it. It will, however, affect the amount of energy it has. So that's what it will affect. So if there is, say, no friction, that means we're not losing any energy. So all that work, this is all energy we had so it was had zero kinetic here. We added two hundred thousand joules of energy, and now it has kinetic energy. It has only kinetic energy at the end. That means if we want to figure out how fast it's going, oh, and it says at the end of the two meters. We could do that. I think that was supposed to say twenty, but we can do two meters. So it's not quite 2,000, it's work times the force it takes to pull it, times 2 now, so now it's just going to be 20,000 joules. So 20,000 joules is the total, that's the total energy we put into it, so that's the total kinetic energy it has. We know kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, we want to find this. Oh, we know how heavy it is, so it would be 1 half... 800 kilograms, our mass, V squared, is equal to 20,000 joules. Multiply this out, that's 400, divide by 400 on both sides. That would be 50, is equal to V squared, square root it. And since I am not don't have a calculator, this is going to be roughly 7.8 maybe 1 at the max, but very close to 7, or you could have left it as 50 square rooted. So the total velocity it should have been is about 7 meters per second, or exactly the square root of 50 after 2 meters. Alright, next problem again, try it on your own, then come back. So Batman, who's 100 kilograms, pretty heavy dude, is fighting crime in Gotham City and falls off a roof that is 50 meters tall. Luckily, he has a glider attached to his suit and hits the ground with a speed of only 1.4 meters per second. Perfectly safe. So first, let's start. How much energy did he have at the beginning? And even before that, let's draw a before and after picture. We have Batman. He's falling, but luckily he has a glider. So when he hits the ground, his velocity is only 1.4 meters per second. So at the beginning, so he had some gravitational potential. 
the end he has some kinetic and because of this there was definitely some friction from air because of his glider pushing against the air to help keep him up so let's start how much energy does he have at the beginning that's all potential so his gravitational potential energy at the beginning it's mgh his mass is 100 kilograms his gravity is 10 meters per second squared and he's a height of 15 meters tall all right multiply these that's going to be 150 times 153 zeros three zeros that looks right all right um if it's not, let me know. I'm doing this in my head. Alright, so that's the amount of joules we have in the beginning. So, my potential energy in the beginning is equal to 15,000 joules. Alright, so that's the first one. So that's A. Alright, next, how much energy does he have at the end? So, we know how fast he's going. We know how heavy he is, so we can find his kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. So that's one half times one hundred times one point four meters per second. Multiply this. I'm actually going to multiply it this direction first. So one hundred times one point four will give us. 140 times one half give us 70 joules. Well, that is definitely not equal to our original energy. So C is how is it possible? Well, if you drew a really good diagram, uh -huh, like I did, um, you can see that he's lost a lot a lot of energy and that went into all of that friction of the air so his glider is probably pretty warm right now how much was it exactly well we can figure out how much we had all right so remember our change in the total energy and actually I drew that backwards excuse me let me I'll be all formal so work plus heat is equal to our change in energy. So since they are no work, so Batman does not do a lot of work. But seriously, does Bruce Wayne work? Doesn't seem like it. Then, so we have heat. It's our final energy, which was 70 joules, minus our initial energy, 1500 joules. So we're going to get a negative answer, which makes sense, because heat is often negative, acting against us. It's going to be negative 14, 9, 3, 0 joules. Alright, hopefully this was helpful and helped explain some of this, and we will continue working on it tomorrow.